Hi, I'm Joseph Tropical Tanks. I'm Daniel. You are watching Jack and Dan. Hey everybody, it's Jack and Dan. And today, we're doing more upgrades on my Aqua Bridge tanks. Yes we are, it's been quite a while. They've just been kind of sitting here brewing. And the pothos is taken off, and the wall of fame's getting bigger, and all kind of things are happening. We have a lot of stickers. <laughs> we have a lot of stickers and things. We got our towels. Oh, he's got the towel over the shoulder. Working on the tanks, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get to work. All right, first thing we're going to address, what are you holding in your hand there, man? This is a dryer vent brush, but we basically use it to clean the aqua bridges because it's so circular and perfect. Yeah, so a lot of people have asked us, hey, what do you do if you get a bunch of algae in the bridges? Now, as you can see, there are tiny little bits, but because we have so many plecos in here and so many uh, hill stream loaches, they pretty much clean it for us. We yeah. rarely ever have to do it. In the you know almost two years since we started this project, uh, with one little bridge over here, and then we went over to having two bridges, we've only had to do it once. Yeah, I know we said this a, a thousand times, but it's always good to have plecos in your tank because they keep a lot of things clean. You don't have to clean as much. Yeah, they're super awesome. And in fact, speaking of plecos, here's the awesome little blue one right here. Um, he was um, not really getting along and jet. Uh, Cap's little tank. I almost said Jack's little tank. Cap's little tank. Uh, before Cap passed away, this little dude was in there with him, getting a little bigger, started eating a lot of pothos, but now he's got lots more algae to eat. And of course, we feed zucchini and algae wafers. So he's happy and he's cleaning, but we really don't ever have to use this. If they do get algae, though, we of course can use this. It's very cheap. It's something everyone should have anyway to clean your dryer brush because, hey, you don't want a fire in your house, right? Yes. So that's, so that's easy, very inexpensive thing to do, but we've only had to do it once. And quite honestly, if we keep this tank running good, we'll probably never have to use it again. And of course, keep your lights on timers, right? Yes. Always keep your lights on timers, and that's going to cut down the algae growth too. So what we're going to be doing here is there's a couple of major things we're doing here today. Number one, Jack's going to take the old magnet there and be cleaning the glass because sometimes certain areas do build up when the sun hits them. So he's going to be working on that. We're going to be taking these two guys, pushing them a little bit together to make more room for all the roots that are growing in here from this pothos. This pothos is really taking off, by the way. Look at how some of this pothos is crawling. Crawling across. This one's coming across. Those are coming across. Really doing awesome. Hopefully, this will inevitably reach a point where this pothos is kind of going up on the light fixtures and up on the wall of fame. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. We have our wall of fame. we got like the pothos you know, growing right up on there. So doing that, cleaning the glass, pushing those together, making more room. Roots are taken over. We are also going to take these avatar rocks and no longer make them avatar rocks. They're kind of starting to infringe in with all these roots. And the plecos love them, but the plecos don't really care if they're hanging or if they're on the ground. So we're going to cut those cords on there. We're going to put them down on the ground here. There's one little guy there munching away on a piece of zucchini. What's up, dude? Uh, we primarily made them avatar rocks, not only for a design, but because you used to have the soft shell turtles in here. And we wanted to have more area for them to dig because they loved going in here and digging, didn't they? Yeah. And they would dig down in that sand and they would hang out in there because that's what soft shell turtles do. Yeah. But we decided we're not going to get more of those. We're going to make this more of a garami tank and a pleco tank and have lots of other cool things. So we're going to lower those islands down. So that's the third main thing we're doing. And the fourth thing we're doing is we're going to try a little bit of an experiment, something we always wanted to do, but we just never really got around to doing it. We're going to cause flow in this tank what we mean by that is we're going to take one of these filters and we're going to hook up the intake valve to that last tank way down there and then the the uh output is going to be in another tank way down here what that's going to do is that's going to kind of force this water a little bit more than it already does to mix and change so that the chemistry of the water and the, the temperature of the water, everything will be exactly the same because we're going to be taking water out of one end and putting it in another end. And we're going to show you how we're going to do that too. All right, Jack's working on cleaning that glass real good. We only do that about every few months or so. We don't have to do it very often either. But we do get a lot of sun in this room, which is actually cool. So he's working on that. I did push these guys closer together. Very simple. Uh, we just think it's a cool look it gives the fish lots of places to hide and cover and then ultimately all these roots are going to fill in these sides in here 
and we're you know this tank's gonna be nice and full now this tank is a little bit different than these side tanks these have these uh hang on the back filters which again we're gonna show you what we're gonna be doing with those but this one has an under gravel filter and if you haven't seen the video setting up this under gravel filter we did it uh well over a year and a half ago and we have never cleaned it a single solitary time and that's one of the reasons we like under gravel filters um, the under this gravel is a grate and these towers of air pull that out when we pump the air in and kind of push this water down through the gravel into the microbiotic system in there and then the clean water comes back out. It is one of the oldest old school filters that you can have and we love them. The only reason we did not put them in this one is because the turtles would be digging in the sand when we had the turtles. Since they're no longer here, we don't, we don't need them. Now, we're not going to pull all that out. Plus, we're going to be using the hang on the back filters to kind of cause this flow system so it wouldn't work anyway. So that'll be fine. We don't have to worry about that. But this is the main filtration of this entire system is this big under gravel filter system here. These are 20-gallon tanks, and this is a 40-gallon tank. So half of the you know, water that is in this system is being filtered by this under gravel tank. We do not clean the gravel. We do not vacuum the gravel. We do not siphon the gravel. We leave it alone. That has been my experience for 45 years of doing this kind of thing and learning about aquariums. And that is how we do this kind of thing. Many people do things differently. That's how we do it. We simply leave this alone. We have the lights on timers. We don't overfeed our fish. We have lots of bottom feeders to clean it up and it really goes without cleaning. It's an awesome system, and if you've never used an under gravel system, we highly recommend it. A lot of people say, well, that's you know crazy, it's old, and it doesn't work well. Well, obviously it does. I mean, this has been up here for a year and a half to two years, and these fish are thriving and doing amazing, and we've never cleaned it once. So it's really just getting that good system and getting that biochemistry to all get along, and you really don't have to mess with it. And if you wanna learn more about this sort of thing, I mean, Check out Father Fish and check out some of his tanks and some of the things he's had set up for 20, 30 years, some of these tanks that he's never touched. He does not use under gravel. You know, he uses a lot of plants and a deep substrate, maybe a sponge filter or something. But ultimately, it's a very effective way to oxygenate your tank, your fish, and clean it, and very low maintenance. So with all that being said now, we're going to start moving on. Let's get these Avatar rocks down. That's the next step. Now, we also want to make mention, because you hear this... Um, Kind of talked a lot about in aquarium videos when you're using a magnet or something of this nature and you come down you just want to just touch the sand at the bottom you don't want to pick any of that up or start digging around into it with the, the magnet if you pick up just a tiny grain of sand and you start dragging it across that plane of grass or a glass or acrylic or whatever your tank is made out of if it's plastic or whatever that little tiny grain of sand will put a big old scratch in it so when you're using that magnet Take it real slow and easy. How old's that magnet you're using, dude? It's probably like 10 years old. No, that magnet right there is about 26 years old. Oh, wow. That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty old. Twice your age. It's a long time. Dad keeps stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, hey, you take care of stuff. It's going to last a long time. It's a very good magnet, very strong, and it cleans the glass well. But again, when you come down, now, even in a gravel situation like this, sometimes these pieces of gravel can be very small. So if you come down in here, just touch it and go back up. Don't start going through it. If you pick up a tiny little piece, you will scratch the heck out of your glass, okay? Now these Avatar rocks, we did a whole video on them. They're really cool. We like the fact that they were suspended. You can barely see that little line. And in fact, when it starts to go algae, the plecos go up it and they clean it. We're just simply going to cut that line and set these guys down onto the bottom. And they're going to be more of a ground decoration and the plecos will probably love them just as much. That's gonna clear this top out and just let all these roots kind of fill this in. If the roots go all the way to the bottom and end up filling the tank a lot, um, we, we probably will then have to reach down in here and trim them. We don't want them to occlude this. We want these plecos to have a little breeding place. They love breeding in here and a little hiding place and, and they dig it. So this is the little aluminum strip that we used. We're simply just gonna turn it, take it out, and again, we did a whole video on how we did that. And we're just gonna cut that cord there. And this guy's gonna go sinking down. All right, so that's that one. As you can see, some of these little plants that we had glued in there, the turtles actually ripped off. They kind of just pulled them out of there because they were playing with them. 
but the couple that are on there, we're just going to leave. Uh, ultimately, these roots will kind of fill all this in, but that'll still give them a nice place to breed and hang out. There's actually one of the males right there, and the big, long, thin female is right there. She's kind of hanging out, sticking out of the one little hole there. Look at those beautiful, long fins. She's something. All right, now we got the other one down. We'll just kind of reposition it. They didn't, for some reason, pull the plants off of this one, only off the one over there on the other side. So Jack's finishing cleaning up that one, and this is the little apparatus we kind of built, you know, to, to suspend them. And uh, again, I'll put that link in the description. It was a really cool idea, and we've always had like avatar rocks and things like that in tanks. In fact, we may be doing it again in the 220 because we're changing that one around. Look at that beautiful blue guy. He's awesome, isn't he? What's up, man? Don't worry, we'll be done with your tank soon. All right, super cool. Jack's almost done cleaning that one. And you can see the roots in this one are really taking off. This thing's gonna be really doing awesome. It's gonna start crawling up here. And ultimately, hopefully, we're gonna get it to where it just crawls right across. The other thing that's cool about this, guys, we will show you about the track lighting, because we did a whole video on these track lightings, um, is you can just pop them off. If you're working on top of this tank and you want this out of the way, you can just twist it and it pops right off and take it out of the track and you can move them. Uh, we, we've had a lot of comments recently about some of the older videos that we, when we posted this track lighting, and people are like, wow, I never thought of that. It's such an amazing, easy, cheap way to light up your fish tanks. It's so cool. And it, I mean, some people don't like the way it looks, but most people are like, wow, I think it looks really good. We think it looks good. We think it's easy. And again, if you're working on them, if you don't know how track lighting works, you just pull on this guy right here and you, whoops, I had a little piece of thing, but you pull on this guy, you turn it and you pop it right off. Yeah, I have a piece of styrofoam in between there, but. Yeah, you pop that right off. You can just take this, set it on the bed or whatever while you're working or wherever you're working at. And now you got that open. You can work on it and you can pop it back off. You can slide them back and forth, angle them, whatever. Okay, same thing over here on this side since we're going to be working on these pumps. You just pull on the thing. Look at that, even with one hand while I'm holding the camera with the other one. Pops right off. We got the uh, incandescent kind of deals in there just because we had a bunch left in the house. And so we're using them up in this. And then, of course, these were UV, but we took the UV out when the turtles left because we had a basking area up there for them. Um, and we are going to be doing another big giveaway and shout-out video. Got a lot more people to add to the, you know, wall of fame here. And since we're almost at 12,000 subscribers, which we may be actually by the time this comes out, we're going to be doing another big giveaway too. And uh, we're getting so much stuff. Jack's starting to... Put it over here got another uh painting if you missed this one what a great painting by darwin great 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 painting there yeah uh, that was a great shout out video we did last we're gonna start putting some of the things over here on this side of the wall just because we're running out of room on the wall of fame aren't we dude yes we are look at this one right here this one started growing out from inside the water and then up and this is probably going to end up crawling up and we're going to put that up here and that'll go the light fixture and stuff too super super awesome i mean pothos is just so great same thing over here this one's starting to crawl this one's growing underneath so what we we'll do is we'll bring these up and then we're going to start having them crawl and we have other pieces of plastic we have them off right now but we do have other pieces of plexiglass and what we do is we put those across the top here and then we can slide these guys that are growing underwater we'll slide them in between the two pieces and then they'll keep crawling like this one here will end up going and then this one here of course so yeah it'll be really cool and it just takes over this all speaking of pothos Derek from dead fred 821 um boy he's got pothos like running along his whole house or something doesn't he yes he does i mean it's amazing what you can do with this stuff and of course we recently did a video at the fish rescue how they use pothos they got 200,000 gallons of total water there and they've got pothos running all around their tanks and stuff to help pull those nitrates out. And uh, this is awesome. Between the undergravel filter, having the lights on timers, and all this pothos, and all these huge roots coming down in here, we barely ever have to do water changes on this tank. I mean, it, it can go sometimes months at a time. We don't even think about it. It's really amazing. Really cool. All right, we got this tube together, didn't we? Yes. So over here on this side, we basically just have a sponge on the end of this filter on the end of this tubing that's going to go in one tank so that you know no fish gets sucked up in it or anything right <laughs> and then this one what we did is we took the pump 
intake here and we just kind of put this on here. Now, that was when I, really hard to do. <laughs> yeah, when I say just, it wasn't just. What we actually did is, because these are both half inch, we wanted it to be a nice tight fit, so we boiled a cup of water, didn't we? Yes. Stuck the end of that in there. So the atoms would expand and it would be easier for yeah. it to Yeah, and then we kind of used a spoon and stretched it out, and now it's on there. Now it's probably never coming off, which is perfectly fine with us. We can actually clean this with a brush. We don't need to take that off. So let's go put it together, see if it works, man. All right, this is just a preliminary test. So we have the tube hooked up to this hang on the back filter, and it's going along the back here. We haven't really hit it or anything yet. It's just kind of going along the back, and it is going into this other tank. Sponge filter sitting there, kind of just sitting there, but we're gonna hold it down into the water, and you can see it's trying to pump it's trying to pull that water now to the other side. So obviously we're going to have to secure this and everything, but it looks like that pump is pulling that water up across this back of this tank here. So we're going to mess around with this and see if we can get it to work a little better. We got the old sponge on the end of the tube there. And for right now, we just got the tube kind of going up over the light fixtures. We did have to add a little extension because we didn't have one long enough, but we did have an extra piece. So for right now, that's going to have to do. It goes over this 40 gallon one and it comes down in, loops around right up into this little hang on the back filter. It's just a little 55. Honestly, we didn't think it would have enough power to suck that all the way down from the other side. But once we got it primed, and that's really the key, just priming it it's actually working pretty good. So that water is being dumped into this tank. And as you can see, the level is staying perfectly fine. And then since there's a vacuum in this bridge, it's being now pushed through this bridge. And you can kind of see, cause we were messing yeah, around. Pretty cool. You can really just see the flow. It, it was oh, there faster you go. before. See a little particle, something right there. Yeah, it's just like. You can kind of see that little particle moving that direction in the bridge. So now the water is going through there. It's now getting into this tank, getting filtered even more because of the under gravel filter, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's going up into this cave or aqua bridge. <laughs> and then it's flowing through this guy. It's a little piece of zucchini, but that big blue guy will come up and get it. Flowing through this bridge, then going down to this tank. And then it's hanging out in this tank and then it's getting sucked back into that little sponge and then back over there. So at this point in time, all of these bridges are interconnected. They're gonna have the same water, the same temperature, the same everything, same culture, same everything. It's gonna be all, and it, it kinda was before, but now it's just constantly flowing. Yeah, now it's much more yes. because the water's actually flowing. We were a little nervous hooking that up, but because you know this is all gravity like this, you could see the level of these tanks are all the same. Just a little bit off the top of that one, a little bit off the top of this one, and a little bit off the top of this one. And yeah, that's just crushing. So very exciting, very exciting that it's working, man. It's, uh, it really wasn't all that hard to do. Yeah, you can really see those tiny little particles. So it reminds me of that Dr. Seuss Horton's a who, those tiny little particles, right? But you could see them kind of going from the right to the left. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Look at this young lady. She's out here. Ooh, let's get a little footage of her. She loves those night lights there. What a beauty. She looks like a dragon. Like an albino so dragon. cool. She's so cool. She's really getting along with that other male in here. So we'll see if they, uh, if they breed in here. So that looks great. That looks awesome. I don't love that little loop in the back, but honestly, it's clear. You don't really notice it, and those roots are going to fill in more. So it's looking fantastic. The meteorite lights are going. The bridges are rocking. Now, the Garamis uses the bridges a lot. They go up in here, and they go back and forth. The Tetra here don't really much, but those guys are going to be coming out. We're going to be putting those guys in a new setup. All the uh, little striated luches really hang out in this tank more. They don't. Uh, they don't really go up to where the bridges are. 
the hill stream loaches do quite often. There's one of the bigger hill stream loaches. They're kind of hanging out because I move things around. Usually they're hiding in the roots, but he's a real nice reticulated one. He's a beauty, huh? Yes. They'll quite often go up in here. In the mornings, a lot of times you'll see them and they're eating all the algae and the bridges. And sometimes they'll venture over to this one, but they usually do go back over to that middle one too. And then this one's doing really good. And this blue guy's really been making this his home. He's been doing awesome. Look how good he's doing. I like, I have like a saying, buffing is like putting the salt or butter on something. It's just the final touch. The final to touch, man. That's right. Yeah, wax on, Daniel Sutton, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at this from, from afar. I mean, this is just really doing awesome. So we're very, very thrilled we got that to go and work. Um, chances are probably about once a week or so, probably going to have to pull that guy off and, you know, rinse it off real good because it'll fill full, full of particles. Um, and so this is going to have a little bit of mechanical filtration. This one over here, of course, has mechanical filtration. That's the only thing, though, is this tank won't really have mechanical filtration. So we might see more sediment build up on the bottom here. Um, probably what we'll do is we'll kind of feed this tank a little bit less and just kind of be careful of, uh, you know, keep an eye on it. But ultimately, with this deep substrate, I mean, things will get worked in. You can see there's a lot of stuff down here now because I recently threw zucchini in here a couple days ago, and they're almost done with it. Of course, that makes more, but I might not. I might put, like, a little smaller pieces in this tank. We'll just kind of see how it works. We'll see how it all works out. Hopefully, that going through there will get, you know, filtered in this tank too. But looking fantastic, man. Doing a great job. So it's a sunny day. We got this done nice and early. So now we got to go out and do some yard work, huh? <laughs> All right. So we just wanted to do a 24-hour follow-up. It's been 24 hours. As you can see, this blue dude here, look how awesome he is. What a handsome fella. He moved all the way from that tank through this bridge to this tank during the night and then through this bridge to this tank. So that's really awesome. So obviously, as you can see, these guys do use these bridges every day. The update we wanted to do is we wanted to show it is trickling pretty slowly, but it is still trickling. Part of the problem is, is this tube kind of bent up and you can see it's kind of, um, you know, causing a little bit of a pinch there. What we're probably going to do is lay this tube flat against the wall and put a suction cup to it so that it, when it comes in the tank, it stays against that back wall and goes right up there. So that was a super easy fix. We just took an old heater suction cup there. You can see it was tight enough to hold the tube, which it really wasn't pulling very hard, but not too tight so that it doesn't clamp it. And that took that little crimp that was out of there. And now we're getting some pretty good flow. You can see it kind of trickling in there in the water. All right, so everything worked out pretty good, right, man? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, it was a little tough, some little things we had to figure out. We're going to leave the tube up here for now just because we want to keep an eye on things, make sure it's working good. We might end up hiding it later or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I think it's really cool this is all going to work out. We'll definitely be doing an update on this, right? Yeah, we got the, uh, the buffing towel from Joseph's, Joseph's Tropical Tanks. Yeah, we got the special buffing towel. It's There's a little Joseph. Shiny and nice. A little shout out. Thanks for the awesome towel, man. So Jack's gonna basically buff this whole setup out real good. Make sure there's no watermarks uh, with his awesome magical towel. Yeah. So thanks for that, Joseph. And uh, basically, uh, hey, we'll be doing an update on this whole thing soon. I'm sure we do updates on all of our tanks. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.